This week on the Road Testament, I, Alex Roy, and my colleague JF Musial are going to discuss the unfortunate disaster unfolding in Japan and its effect on the Japanese auto industry and the ripple effects on the auto industry worldwide. JF, unfortunate Alex. topic. Let's just get started. Okay. So, this week on the Road Testament, the disaster in Japan, the earthquake, the tsunami, and its effects on the Japanese auto industry. Uh, Jeff and I have been doing a lot of research into this, and um, there's not actually not that much solid information, not enough to be for, well, to be sure about the effects will be, but we know some things for sure. Jeff, uh, I know you've been looking into the supply chain issues uh, in for the U.S. plants that are affected. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, first off, the, right off the bat, we need to understand what's happening with these factories. These factories in Japan, all the car uh, manufacturers in Japan have halted production through next week. That's not necessarily because the factories are damaged, but because uh, the infrastructure and the people, um, they, they can't keep the factories open uh, right now with the power grid the way it is, and there's no real transportation uh, for the people to get to work, as well as the infrastructure of the supply chain. Uh, that's well, let's the be biggest clear, let's issue. Be clear. The, you have the rolling blackouts, and factories, as I understand it, are low yes. on the totem pole of uh, for power. And the government yes. has actually asked the uh, car manufacturers to close the plants for yes. you know, and they're only letting them reopen on a limited basis sometime next week. Is that correct? That is correct. And it also comes down to the supply chain. You know, these factories need to get their parts from somewhere. And a lot of these suppliers, uh, they they they've been damaged. And uh, you know, for example. Um, it, it also rolls through North America. You know, a lot of these Japanese manufacturers have plants in North America, and their supply chains have been affected as well. So the North North American plants have actually gone into a, a somewhat of a holding pattern. Uh, all the Japanese car manufacturers have um, moved to a single shift per week. Uh, so instead of having evening shifts and uh, weekend shifts, there is only one shift uh, Monday through Friday, normal working hours. Um, and it doesn't also it also affects uh, Ford. It isn't just Japanese car manufacturers. Ford well, let me stop. Let me stop you right there, just so I understand yep. this clearly, because uh, you know a little bit more about this than I do. You have the actual all completed cars that are coming off of out of factories in Japan, which yep. uh, you know are not going to be coming out of Japan for a couple of weeks. And so you have yes. there's you have the an inventory of cars here in the U.S. that's going to run out. Uh, for yep. some period of time, and then uh, so that's one thing. And then uh, talk a little bit about the actual sub manufacturing and the parts that and how that, that how that's affected in the U.S. Got it. Well, just to be clear, there's still a 60-day supply of most cars for dealerships, uh, Japanese car uh, cars at dealerships here in the U.S. So you are at no risk of running out of cars at any dealerships if you want to go buy a car. So let's keep that in mind. When it comes to the supplies. Uh, especially hybrid technology, you know, the Toyota Prius, all the supplies for the Toyota Prius come out of Japan, as well as the hybrid systems for Ford cars. Uh, so those are being affected quite, uh, quite substantially because those suppliers who provide the, the hybrid systems, the battery technology, uh, not only for car manufacturers, but also for uh, camera manufacturers and other electronic man manufacturers, they are being affected and hit hard right now because, well, they can't build the finished products without all the necessary parts. Right, uh, and of course, in Japan itself, uh, the, uh, the actual steel industry in Japan is, has a problem because they have a lack yep. of power, so actual raw materials required, even within Japan, to build the cars are going to be in a very limited, uh, limited availability. Uh, you know, exactly. You say we have nothing to worry about in terms of buying Japanese uh, goods and cars, but, uh, you know, the strengthening of the yen versus the dollar uh, you know, means, at least in the last couple of days, means that Japanese automobiles will be more expensive to buy in the U.S. So that's, yeah. in fact, I read a story which suggests that that actually will be one of the biggest problems for Japanese manufacturers and, and, and exports of Japanese automobiles and, and goods. Um, let's talk for a second about the difference between the effects of the earthquake, the tsunami, and the unfolding nuclear disaster. Uh, I yes. know you've seen this map. Uh, Truth About Cars has pulled together a lot of really interesting articles, maybe the best single resource of information about this topic. Uh, and I'm looking at the map right now. Uh, obviously, if you only had an earthquake and a tsunami, um, if you have a period of time of instability and, and, and uh, infrastructure issues to re and reconstruction. But you have this nuclear disaster. And Although the rolling blackouts and infrastructure damage is, you know, somewhat regional, but the blackouts have moved beyond the region, 
There are specific automobile manufacturers who have plants in the region. And if this nuclear disaster unfolds, uh, those plants, well, they may fall inside the radioactive fallout zone if, if in yep. fact, it comes to that. Uh, Jeff, you, you see this map in front of you? Yeah, I see this map, and, and you know, right off the bat, we're going to have Fuji, who is actually Subaru. Uh, they're going to be affected. Toyota is going to be affected. Uh, and Nissan, uh, there was that amazing image online of 2,300 Nissans and, and Infinities wrecked at the port. That's because their factory is right there. Uh, they are, they're in... Uh, they're going to have some issues. There, there are claims that the, the, the leaf was going to be hurt because of it. Well, the 600 leafs due for the U.S. were actually shipped two days before the earthquake, so the leafs will make it here, but 370Z production and Nissan GTR production, as well as ne Infinity M's, uh, they have all been affected, and that's going to well, cause a big strain. Well, let's look specifically at, at you know, looking at this map. Uh, you know, Fukushima itself is where the plant is located. Nissan has a major, major uh, parts facility there. Uh, yep. And just north of Fukushima in Miyagi Prefecture, and then you have Tochigi, you have uh, Nissan Automobile Manufacturing. So that affects, I believe, the GTR and uh, the 370Z. And then you have yep. uh, Honda has a parts facility in Tochigi just south, and Toyota has parts in Miyagi just north. And that's yep. uh, all within, you know, 7,500 miles of, of, the, the, uh, of the zone. And if yeah. the situation gets worse than it appears today, and I think it will get worse, you know, those plants are going to have to be rebuilt somewhere else. I mean, you can't put people in that danger zone. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think we're going to see the situation get a lot worse than we know even now. And, um, well, certainly Toyota, Nissan, and Fuji are going to have <laughs> a big problem. Big problem. Yeah, well, what, what you're initially going to see is, is other factories elsewhere that are safe be retooled to, su to support these vehicles. Um, and it's just going to be a long, drawn-out process as to how they're going to reallocate resources so that these vehicles can be produced. Uh, and that will affect other supply chains and other factories with other vehicles because they need to create a balance of what cars need to be built when. Well, you know, I'm going to say something maybe not politically correct here. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the GTR. I, I actually like the 370Z. The Leaf, not so much. Um, but I think the biggest issue here is not going to be model specific because the 370Z and the GTR don't represent enormous pieces of, uh, you know, I don't think they're big, you know, growth uh, products for those companies. But I think the big problem is going to be that there's a rising growth for, you know, green vehicles. And I think the yeah. biggest problem is going to come from the rising cost and shortage of parts for Japanese and American manufacturers making those cars. At the very time you have rising demand, you're going to have ex greatly rising costs and shortage of supply, um, yeah. which is, uh, you know, bad timing for everyone all around. Uh, I, I don't know if there's much more I can say at this point because this, we don't know enough. But uh, by next yeah, week, there, I think we're going to have a lot more to say. There isn't enough information coming out of, uh, you know, of, quite, quite frankly, these car manufacturers don't know what they're going to do at this point. Uh, it's still up in the air, and, and you know what? We are an automotive-based show, and we do give insight into what's happening in the industry, in the automotive industry. That is the realm you and I both work in, off of Fastlane Daily. Uh, well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist look at a map and see who's where, and, and you know, and and how close they are to the plant. Well, in any yeah. case, look, uh, let's um, stop talking about cars and just say I hope for the people of Japan that this situation is getting worse. And um, you know, a yeah. couple of friends over there, and um, you know. Teddy Miller, uh, come back to New York. I think you'll be happy here. <clears throat> Bring your wife and kids. It'll be fine. Uh, JF, yeah. I'll uh, see you in New York next week. Sorry I'm dressed like this, but I've been up all night watching the news. And um, we'll, get, um, it's okay. we'll get back to this next I'm, week. I'm sick as a dog. I just got back from California. I know. I know. Trust me. It's all okay. Right. We'll see you next week here in New York, okay? I feel better. Good night. All right. Thanks, man. Bye. I'm living in the fast lane.